Hi, we're So Awkward. I'm Brooke. And I'm Rachel. Welcome to our fall episode. We've got a fun little project to do today, and Rachel's going to share this one with us. Yeah, today we're going to make these uh, wild Alaska table runners that I bought while I was in Alaska this summer. And it was labeled on the display, 10-minute table runner. Yes. Now, so I'm like, I have to do, we have to do this. We have to do this. And test out that 10 minutes. Yes. And the 10 minutes is going to include when we have all the fabric ironed and ready to go. And we're going to read the instructions first. Yes. Twice. <laughs> and then we'll start our timer because yes. um, it should only take 10 minutes. The lady in the shop did suggest we go through it first. So this is our first run. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Let's get sewing. So we're going through our pieces and getting them ironed and getting them ready. We have not started the timer yet, and we're already noticing that our two accent piece fabrics are not the same width. And we're supposed to have two and a half inch pieces. Hers is three inches, which is perfect. Mine's five. That one, it, it, it's possible for yours that it was like the last of the bolts or something. So maybe I'll make mine two and a half inches wide? No, no, no. You're following the pattern. Oh, okay. Still haven't started the timer yet. We're still prepping our fabrics. And reading the instructions. Yeah. At first, I thought we had different patterns because yellow and white paper. But no, they're the same. Also, we're just looking at, and I was looking at the photo, and I'm like, we don't even have to do binding on this. Nope. But we have to make strips for like, um, it's an accent. And then you said, this is going to be easy. <laughs> Easier than I thought. I thought it was going to be a little harder. Well, we haven't finished yet. But so. we haven't even started our timer. No. And we're already, what, 40 minutes now into this? I don't know. Yeah. Sure. It's taking me like 20 minutes just to iron these pieces. So, so far we're not 10 minutes into this project. <laughs> Look how beautiful her stuff is laid out. <laughs> it's all going to make sense when we're sewing it, right? Uh, sure. The pattern is very short. Like, there's, this is it. It's and this like, is like the whole instructions. It's like a challenge on a baking show. Yeah. The Great British Sew-Off. The fabric's out. Fabric's out. Tool's out. Look how nice, neat hers looks. Ready to do this? Sure. We've got the timer there. I'm just going to start from zero, and we're just going to count up. All right. So we're just going to keep videoing this the whole time. I hope this goes faster. Yeah. I hope this goes quick. Yeah. Ready? And go! assumptions with this pattern then? Yeah, we did. Even after reading the directions, are we following them? No, we're not. <laughs> do as we say, not, not as, as we, we do. do. This is where it's going to get a little slow. We should stop the timer because I have to wait for Brooke and the thing. We only have one iron going. Any more irons going and then we would have a fuse problem. Oh, it's not even on. <laughs> what were you doing over there, Brooke? Trying to get my fabric situated. This thing's annoying. To get this right. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's homemade. I guess I can talk about Alaska. I went on a tour of Alaska with my mom. We went to the interior. We went uh, from Fairbanks to Anchorage. And Brooke sort of did a similar tour, not this last summer, but the summer before in August as well. Yes. So yes. we actually went to some of the same places just a year apart. Yes. I went in an RV. 
She went in an RV. I went on a bus tour and we did do a train tour for a, a portion of it. Met some wonderful people. Shout out to Janet and Kay and Dale. They were my friends. And we went, um, let's see. We, I went to every gift shop between Fairbanks and Anchorage. I got a lot of stuff. <laughs> and, um, oh, I got some, oh, I got to meet two musk. We went to two musk ox farms and I got to meet some musk ox. And they are very cute. And then I even got some um, fiber that I'm going to spin into yarn. Is it my turn? Your turn to iron. I'm oh. going to cut my ends off. Your hands. Can I show you? Yeah. I did that. You can do whatever you want. Yes, I can. we're talking about winterizing our plants. Rachel has two wonderful plants here that she has had outside during the summer because they loved it outside the best. This is a desert rose. It's a very desert loving, dry loving plant. So just stick it outside in the full sun, hardly water it. This thing was a stick when she got it because I had it and it was not loving life. She got it. It's full of leaves. I'm looking forward to taking this home and letting it lose leaves. <laughs> I'm going to install a grow light, I think, and try to help some of my plants during the winter. This thing's going to really love a grow light. And I will probably won't do any watering all winter. This is a Monstera. And when she had it outside at the beginning of the summer, it had three leaves. And now it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten leaves. And the new leaves are coming out very mature with all the splits in them. So it's very nice. It's also important to treat your plants before you bring them in for the winter with some neem oil or other insectis safe insecticide to make sure there's no any wool, woolly aphids, any thrip, any um, mealybug or anything like that because you don't want to bring anything inside to your indoor house plants. And also you can see out with the old, in with the new, we're going to cut off this leaf because it was an old one that had bug damage on it with all those gross spots. So we got an old leaf out of here, new leaves in. So don't forget to winterize your plants nicely and hardly any watering, about half the amount of watering that you would do during the summer because they're not as thirsty. Thank you. Have a good time with your plants. That's a wrap on our 10 minute table runner. Woohoo! It took a little more than 10 minutes. Yes, it took about 33 minutes. But um, even that's short. That's pretty short for us. For us. We usually were doing seven hours. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think this whole thing's probably about a two-hour project. Yeah. Maybe more because we didn't cut the fabrics. They right. came in a kit from the Quilted Raven in Anchorage, Alaska. Thank you. Yes, but the cutting would be very simple. Very simple very cutting. Simple. It's, it's all, with the fabric. It's all rectangles. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's five fat quarters for the cutting. Mm -hmm. Five fat quarters for the fun. Mm -hmm. And definitely five for addiction. It was fun. I could see making these for every holiday. And I was thinking you could do one side one holiday and the other side another holiday, but they could coordinate and it would be really easy. Yes. If you can find other ways to do something with the table runner, let us know besides doing a table runner, uh, wall hanging, couch. back of a couch thing. So let us know what you think could be used for a table runner. So, Definitely. Yeah. So thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Yes. 
And until next time, don't, don't forget, forget to be, be so awkward. awkward. yesterday that I got you but it's been 18 years of work hard work and you have been with me through it all ripping apart my work you were so always, that I could do it again you were always there for the bad times through all the bad times and I appreciate you for all that you've done for me Bye, Sally. I love you.